All right, everybody, welcome to the presentation. Uh, my name is Trevor, and I am going to be your mentor during this session. Um, today, we're going to share with you guys how to effectively edit or revise a listing. And we're going to spend a considerable amount of time just looking at how to revise and edit a product description really well. We've gotten more and more questions about that recently, so we thought we'd do a little presentation on it. So that's what we're going to do. Um, if you've got any general eBay questions, maybe hold those to the very end. We'll answer those then. Um, but I want to take you through just the process of getting an item revised. Okay? So let's assume here for a second you're on eBay and you need to get in to revise an item that you've listed. Now, there's different reasons why you might want to revise an item. Maybe you made a mistake on it. Maybe the pricing is a little too high or too low. Maybe you got another picture that you want to add in, or maybe you've got something you need to add to the description. Whatever the case may be, there are going to be times where you need to revise certain items that you've already created. Here's how you do it. You come up to your My eBay account right up here at the top right, and it'll take you into your, your My eBay section. And uh, I always have you guys come down here. You'll notice this. There's a navigation here on the left-hand side of your screen. You know, it says summary, and then it says buy and lists and purchase history, sellers you follow, et cetera, et cetera. There's a sell section, and I'm going to go to the active section here, okay? Here's the active section. This shows my active listings. Right now on this account, there are three active listings here. Okay, it's going to show you views and watchers. It's going to show you your price, how much time is left on the listing, et cetera. Well, let's say for a second I need to revise a certain product, and I'm going to go ahead and re and revise um, this one right here. Okay, so I can come over here to uh, more actions, and I can click this revise button. Okay, you see this little revise link right here? More actions, and then revise. Okay. We'll click on that. And this takes me back into um, an editing window for, for the product. Okay, So I could come in here and edit whatever I want. Uh, here's the title section. Maybe my title wasn't long enough and I need to add some keywords there. Or maybe I just have some keywords that I'd like to replace with others. You know, That's where you might be testing your title to see what keywords are most effective. Um, there's lots of things that I could edit about this. Maybe I add in or take away a picture. Here's where we get most of our questions, okay? This description section right here causes problems for my clients all the time. Specifically when this happens, okay? Let's pretend this is a brand new product. Okay, and let's pretend I am listing a Walmart item, just as an example. Let me see if I can find a good example of this. You'll notice sometimes when you're copying and pasting an item's description that there are going to be links. Okay, I'll, I'll explain more about what I mean here. So let's say here's the description for this TV. Let's say I copy it, right, highlight it, right-click on top and hit copy, and I come in here and I paste it. In the, in the eBay section right here, okay, paste. There we go. So we just successfully copied that product description from Walmart over onto this listing. And so as to not to confuse, we're just assuming this is a, this is a new listing, okay? Well, when, when I tried to save this listing, for whatever reason, it wouldn't let me save it. And the reason why is, is you, if you scroll down here, you'll notice these right here are links. These links came from Walmart, okay? If I were at Walmart and I clicked on one of these, this is a link that takes me to another place within Walmart. TV stands, right? If I click on that link, it takes me over to Walmart's TV stand section. Well, I just, I just, copied this on accident and and I've had a few clients do this where they copy links like this you should always if you're doing the retail strategy just quickly browse through what you're copying and pasting so as to not copy links if you can because that doesn't make any that doesn't make any sense right 
in my eBay listing here, it says TV stands sold separately. See all TV stands. I probably want to delete this out, right? Because I don't want to send them to Walmart. Plus, this actually goes against eBay's policy. You're not allowed to put links to other websites in your eBay um, item description. You may not even realize that you actually copied a link in. Usually eBay will say something when you try to save this. Like I said before, if I tried to save this item as it is right now, eBay would probably point out that this right here is in fact a link and we need to get rid of it. And that's just what I'm going to do. Okay? So I'm going to delete this, highlight, and then hit the delete button and that's gone. I'm going to keep TV stands sold separately and I'll also keep TV mount sold separately. I'll go ahead and hit the delete button and get rid of that as well. Okay? Now, now my links are gone. And I can browse through this and just make sure there's not any other odd links that shouldn't be showing up. I want to make sure that there's there's not any information about my supplier. Sometimes in a product description it'll actually say, you know, Walmart offers XYZ. And and we don't want that there. We don't want anything resembling uh, who our supplier is at all. So we delete that out. But the big thing is is being able to identify a link in one of these descriptions and, and getting rid of it. Okay. Um, the other thing you guys might want to do is, uh, especially if you're writing your own product description, you may want to learn how to format this stuff a little bit better. Um, there's a toolbar right here when you're writing a description where you can choose fonts. Um, you can choose size of font. You can choose text color. And I know this is this is you know this is old hat for some of you guys. Some of you guys know how to do this, but that's okay. Just for you guys that are a little newer, if you wanted to change the font on, say, this first paragraph right here, you could highlight it. And we could select something a little different, right? There we go. There's our new font. And let's say we wanted to highlight this right here a different color. I could highlight it, select this. And create this little this uh this this new color on my listing, right, or I could bold something or underline it or italicize I can highlight hit bold, hit italicize hit underline right so you could you could doctor up your listings a little bit, your listing descriptions this way, you could center justify it. I don't know why, but you'd you could right justify it that doesn't make sense you you'd probably want to keep it left justified. Um, if you've got a bulleted list of things, you can you can add one of those. So if you had certain features that you wanted to offer, you can click on this bulleted list, and you can create bullets. Oops, let me bring that down. All right, bullets. You can do that with numbers as well. Check spelling. Anyway, this right here is your toolbar for formatting. Now I showed you guys that, but here's my honest opinion. I, most in most cases, if you're doing a retail drop shipping strategy, and you're copying and pasting information from a supplier, their description over into eBay, you don't really need to go in here and format too much. Um, I don't format anything at all. I leave the same formatting that came over with my supplier, except for the fact that I look for anything that talks about my supplier, and then I also look for any um, links. So if you get that error message that comes up when you're trying to list something, it's probably uh, one of the links in your description. You have to find it and get rid of it. Here's another option though. I've got a few clients that do this. So let me let me delete all this out. I'm going to delete all this information out. Bear with me just one sec. Hold on. Okay, let's say I'm starting fresh here, okay? There's nothing in the description box. If I went over to Walmart and I did the same thing, I copied this entire thing right here, and then I went over to eBay. If I paste it here under the standard tab, 
it's going to keep the same formatting just like that. It's going to look very similar to the way it looked over at Walmart. If I instead click HTML right here, this is the HTML tab, and I paste it, it still is going to have that same formatting, but that's not how it'll actually show up on eBay. Now if I flip, if I flip this back to standard, um, you're going to see it, it, it took everything just the same, but it didn't take the formatting. So if you want to start fresh on a listing and you don't want all of their formatting to come over and you just want the standard eBay formatting, then what you need to do is just that, copy and paste it into the HTML and then come over to the standard and you'll be able to work with it fresh. You guys see the difference there? If I start this by copying it into standard, it takes all the formatting over with me. And then at that point, if I click on HTML, it looks like this. You can see all this HTML code. And all this code does is it makes up the formatting for that page. If I don't want that formatting, um, I can eliminate it by just making sure that when I copy and paste, I put it into the HTML. Guys, is that confusing or is that making any sense to you guys at this point? The difference between the standard and the HTML. If that's confusing, I can I can clarify. I guess the point I'm making is that in most cases, I just copy and paste right into standard, and then I just look for anything that looks amiss and I delete it out. But if you really want to change the formatting, and I, I guess I'm not really sure why you would need to do that, you could, in theory, paste it into the HTML and then click on the standard tab and then edit it from there. Here would be an example of that. HTML tab is selected. I paste the description in. I click on standard. And it looks just like a big box of text, or a big wall of text. And maybe I break this out into some paragraphs here. Right? Maybe I put a title right here of what the product is in big, in big bold letters. Maybe I want this to stand out, so I highlight it, I change the font, and I push it up to 18, right? Maybe I want this red, and I want to underline. See that? So I, I could change this if I wanted and, and kind of make it uniquely mine. Um, but in eBay, especially with the retail strategy, there's really no reason to. You're you're focusing on speed, um, so you should just be quick copy and paste right over from your supplier. I just want to show this to you guys in case you want to do some editing on your own. Okay. Um, okay. Questions, guys? Concerns? Or does that does that make sense? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on this anymore. If uh, if you guys get this pretty well. You'll notice now that I've made these changes too, if I go back to the HTML tab, you'll see some code in here. And again, that code is what makes up the way the, the page looks. I didn't write that code myself. The program wrote it for me because every time I make a change over here under the standard view, if I change this paragraph right here to, let's say, this blue color, then that would automatically show up here in the HTML that I did it. Okay. That blue, that blue is awful, isn't it? Let's change that. Like it's burning my eyes. There you go, back to black. But can I tell you, I've seen some clients over the years that get kind of creative with their descriptions for their stuff. They've got colors going everywhere. They've added in pictures and, you know, little uh, GIF files that move and, you know, it looks like you look down in the description and you see every color of the rainbow and different fonts and stuff. Um, let me just advise you that the standard black and white is just fine. A normal font is just fine, right? Like you don't need all that fancy stuff to help you sell your item. In fact, I would say in most cases, it almost makes it look a little less professional, okay? Just keep it standard. Um, so Jacqueline, Jacqueline asked, do you need to scramble up your your product descriptions? In other words, is it legal? Do you violate some sort of copyright 
if you take a product description from a place like Walmart and paste it onto eBay as your own? And the answer is probably not. Okay, and I and I tell you that because after all, it, it probably wasn't Walmart that wrote the description. Who wrote this original description, guys? It was the manufacturer, wasn't it? It was Samsung that wrote it. And Samsung's not going to care if you're using their exact manufacturer's description. In fact, don't you think Samsung would want that? So is there a need to scramble it up here and to like change the wording? Uh, there's really not, not at this stage. Um, if you were doing a website, now I know we're talking about eBay here, but if you had a website, then yes, there would be a need for that because it, you know, you won't rank as well on a website if you've got copied descriptions, but on eBay, it's, it's almost irrelevant because, um, for the most part, you're not really getting most of your traffic from search engines. You're just getting it from direct searches that happen within eBay. So do you need to write your own unique stuff? No. And is it likely that anybody even contacts you ever about having a copied description? Most likely not. I suppose it could happen, but no, I wouldn't worry about it. It's fine to just copy and paste these descriptions. Okay. Good question, Jacqueline. I appreciate that. Um, so I don't, Michelle. Michelle asked, do you add shipping and return information in, in every description box? No, not with the retail strategy. Um, a lot of times, because that shipping and return information is found on another spot within your, your listing, right? Like when you're creating a listing, you're creating your shipping policy right here. And that shows up somewhere else. So really, you don't have to have a return policy and a shipping policy in your item description. This really is more made for just the description of the product. I've done it on some of my listings that way, but it's not required. Good question. The retail strategy is about speed. I know you've heard me say that a thousand times, but you, what you don't want to do is take five minutes and, and be doctoring up your description when it's not really going to help you sell it any better. But because we know a few of you guys do want to get in here and, and change up your descriptions a little bit, maybe because you're writing your own. I mean, a lot of you guys who sell your own stuff, especially at the start of the program, uh, you don't have the you don't have the option to just go out and copy and paste. You have to create your own thing, right? So if you're writing your own product description, sometimes it pays to know these little tools a little bit better, and that's why we're showing them to you. Okay. And then the other big reason we brought this whole thing up is. We still get clients that, that say, hey, I can't get my listing up. eBay's telling me I have some sort of invalid description or there's a link in my description. Well, we just showed you how to get rid of those and how to, and how to spot those. Okay. All right, guys, questions about this issue specifically at all? And then if not, anything about the item description? and revising an item. By the way, if, if we wanted to finish up this revision, I could come down all the way down to the bottom and hit continue and then save it. I, I would have to hit continue, it would have me review the item and then I could save it officially and the item would be revised. I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna mess up the listing that I've already got, but, but you guys see the point. Okay, so um, General eBay questions I'm open to. I saw some earlier that we'll take. If you guys are watching this recorded, I think I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna stop it here for you guys because I just wanted to mainly cover editing the description and how to revise an item. So hopefully this helped you out.